Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. Well, this is one of them that's related to pawpaw. It's called a nona muricata. It's also called graviola or guanabana or soursop or Brazilian pawpaw. And they're not supposed to use the pawpaw name, but they're copying the pawpaw name in order to cash in on my good work on pawpaw see with this plant. Uh, we looked at different graviola capsules which are out there for sale and one of them was 24 times less potent than pawpaw, another one was 56 times less potent than pawpaw uh, extracts that are sold by Nature Sunshine. So don't get misled by the graviola business. There's no biological standardization. I've done the research on this, over 28 compounds I've isolated from this plant they're the single ring compounds, they're not biologically active, at least 10 times, 10,000 times less potent than the pawpaw compounds. But they're still active, but they're just not as potent. And uh, so don't be misled by this plant. The next slide. So here's the ananaceous acetogenes, and these are these active compounds. I know I don't want to bore a general audience with chemistry, but that's what I do for a living, you know? I bore people with chemistry. And uh, so down at the bottom, we see a structure. And if we start over at the right, you see a number one there, two, three, two, four, and then come through here to 34. So there's 34 carbon atoms in a row, all put together with two carbon atoms at a time from acetates by the plant. That's a long chain fatty acid. And the only other place I've seen a long chain fatty acid like that in nature is in beeswax. Other plants, usually have only like 18 carbons in a row, like oleic acid in olive oil, or stearic acid in lard, those are only 18. Fish oils have some C20 or C22 compounds, so DHA and EPA they call them, and they're good for uh, you know, your brain. You know, fish is good brain food. And, uh, but these long chain fatty acids are highly unusual. The only plant family that I know of that puts these things together. So there's C35 or C37 total carbons. There's a three carbon unit that adds on. They end up with those rings in the middle of the structure. Those are called tetrahydrofuran rings. Sometimes there's a six membered ring that's called the tetrahydropyran ring. And in this case, this compound has the rings non adjacent to each other. But in the next slide, we see some rings that are adjacent to each other. Well, this one's very weak in the way it's showing up at the top there. But at any rate, there's a whole diversity of these structures in the plant. And people get the idea that a plant just has one active compound. You know, like opium has got morphine. It's also got codeine and papaverine, but morphine's the main thing. You make heroin out of morphine and all that. Coca plant has got cocaine, okay? Pawpaw has got 50 compounds, okay? So the next slide uh, shows us some of the diversity of these compounds. These are adjacent ring compounds those letters A through E there refer to six chiral centers on that part of the molecule. Overall, there's eight chiral centers. Those are carbons with, more, with four different things attached. And every time that happens, if you change two things around, you create a new molecule. So just with those eight chiral centers, there's 256 possible isomers of the structure illustrated there. And it was our job to figure out what is the exact structural stereochemistry. I mean, how does this thing really look in three dimensions? And we did it. And it was published in the Journal of American Chemical Society, which is the most prestigious chemical journal in the world. And it's published right here. I was out there this morning, had a meeting at the American Chemical Society headquarters here in Columbus. Okay, so asimacin, trilobacin, bilatacin, bilatacinone, these are compounds that we found in pawpaw. The next slide. This gives you a little hint as to the complexity. All these little peaks are tracings from high-performance liquid chromatography. And you get a peak for one or more compounds. And so one of my students, Dr. Zhao, 
isolated every one of those compounds and proved their structures. And in other fractions, there are more compounds. So in all, there's more than 50 pawpaw compounds. And we just were looking at a, an HPLC mass spec, mass spec tracing uh, about a month ago. And my goodness, I looked and I said, there should be some compounds that weigh 620 instead of 622. And we looked and there are compounds there. So there are more compounds there that we haven't isolated yet. So it's very complicated. Now, if you want to make a drug, drugs by almost definition today are single chemical entities. Only one compound they want in the drug because the assay is easy. Okay? And they can quantitate it and they can determine blood levels and do all sorts of wonderful things with pharmacokinetics and things that I don't really understand and I don't even think are necessary, but they want to do it before you can get anything approved. And by the time they get done with all their tests, they've spent $900 million before anybody can even use the drug. And in the meantime, 600,000 people are dying per year, right? Where's the urgency? There isn't any. So fiddle on making a pure compound. I isolated the pure compounds. I got the patents on the pure compounds, Purdue does. But we'll never get them developed. I've been there. I've been to Merck, Bristol, Lilly, Upjohn, Abbott, you name it, I've been there. They're interested. They take notes. They steal my ideas. But they won't license it. Because they didn't find it. It's a not invented here problem with those guys. The next slide. So here's this little brine shrimp test uh, using these little sea monkeys. And uh, we determine the LC50, that's a lethal concentration to kill 50% of the shrimp. And this has been the workhorse of my laboratories. And we still use them. We use them out in Nature Sunshine products to standardize the extracts. The standard extract kills brine shrimp at 0 0.5 parts per million with 0% moisture. That's the standard material. And there's 12 and a half milligrams of that per capsule. And if it turns out a little bit less potent, I put a little more in. A little bit more potent, I put a little less in. So that from bottle to bottle, you're going to get the same effect from capsule to capsule. Next slide. OK, then I could look at the different parts of the plant and see where the activity is the most concentrated. Initially, we're working on the, uh, on the bark. And the bark was quite active in the brine shrimp. But it turns out that the twigs were the best, like 0 or 0 0.04 parts per million with a, a yield up, you know, about 1.78%. The leaves we see down here are 53, almost 54. So the leaves are like a thousand times less active than the twigs. So I don't want any leaves in my extract, okay? Because they don't contribute much. And you see the unripe fruit there, 0 0.06? That's why I got sick, you know? Because I ate some green ones. And the plant doesn't want you to eat green fruit because the seeds aren't ready yet. So it makes the fruit, so it makes you throw up. So possums and raccoons and little boys won't eat them, you know? <laughs> Until those seeds are ready. And then you can eat the seeds and go poop them out someplace and you spread the species around. Okay? So nature has this all figured out. Okay, the next slide. We also saw, I, I sent this extract off to Eli Lilly in 1982. And there were two guys there that believed in me. And they were both entomology people, not chemists. And so they tried the extract against insects. They had seven insects in a panel. And we were able to kill five of the seven insects. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.